Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Spontan vs. the French Police, playing as part of the 12th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Uh, I, I am excited to be joined by the director of, of the film, Ovidie, uh, today with me. Hi, Ovidie. How are you? Hi. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being here with us today. Uh, I think uh, it's one of the most important documentaries in the selection. So I'm really excited to be talking about that with you. Uh, I, I just wanted to start by asking you, how did you involve in this project and how did you decide to do this project? Mm, I, um, I started to work on this project in 2019. In fact, the th the film is about um, uh, a trial that took, took place in 2019 in Paris, but it all started in 2014 when a Canadian tourist claimed uh, to be raped by uh, two policemen in Paris uh, in a place we call Trancis, Trancis Quai des Orfèvres. It's a very, very famous place uh, where uh, uh, the best uh, police uh, police squad are uh, um, th this place is very famous in France because it's in many many French movies. You know, it's like an yeah. uh, important place in in French cinema. Yeah. There, there, there are many many films about uh, 36 Quai des Orfèvres. Many many. It's a very famous um, building. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very famous building, and it's the the best police. I mean, uh, the 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 policemen we are talking about, they were at the terrorist attack at the Bataclan. Uh, you know, it's uh, that that kind of police. So it's a quite popular police as well. It's not uh, the, the the police that will give you uh, when, when you know when you're not parked uh, in uh, good place. I mean, it's it's a very very important police. They are they are like uh, in America. There are SWAT teams they're like equal to that in French police right they're like absolutely. special trained forces yeah absolutely yeah and so uh, Emily Sponton who was a, a tourist at that time uh, in 2014 she was in Paris for holidays and uh, so she got drunk in front of the 36 Quai des Orfèvres and she met uh, this policeman and uh, they went to the 36 together and then the camera stopped. We don't know what happened uh, inside, but Emile Sponton claimed to be raped by this policeman and the story started in 2014. Emile Sponton is um, also um, uh, the daughter of a former policeman. Yeah. So she called her dad when uh, these things happened and uh, she followed the advices of uh, her dad at that time. But Emily Sporton is as well uh, what we could call a bad victim. Like there are many bad victims in rape cases, as we know. There are many, many bad victims, unfortunately, because she was drunk. She was dressed uh, sexy. She had a very short uh, short. And uh, uh, people say that she were, um, how, how could I say? too friendly with the policemen, you know what they, I mean? They claim that she encouraged them uh, in any in the way before because of the way she was she was wearing her clothes and because of the way she was behaving. So in a way, they felt they have a right to just come on her, like uh, be close to her in a way. They they felt right to do that, right? The policemen. Yes. Yeah. And the the question in in this uh, in this trial in, in this story is uh, can we consent at uh, eleven uh, uh, p.m. and uh, not consent in at uh, one or two a.m. in the morning? That that was the the main question is ca can we be can we consent and then not consent and. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the justice decided that uh, she consented all the way, because in 2016, two judges said, okay, there's no case, there will be no trial, and uh, no, she, she wasn't raped. Then after Me Too, Me Too in uh, 2017, October 2017, changed everything in this story. 
because um, there's the, the first trial took place in two, uh, 2019. And so 2016, no rape, no case, no trial at all, uh, nothing happened. Yeah. And 2019, the two policemen were um, condemned to uh, seven years of uh, jail. And seven years, especially for policemen, and especially in a rape case, seven years is very, very, very unusual. Yeah. And so that's when I started to work on the, on the, on this oh. film. And after, as you know, uh, in 2022, so a few months ago, there's been a, an appeal. And uh, now, officially, for the French justice, they are innocent. Yeah. The two policemen are innocent. Unfortunately, yeah. And so the question, my main question was, in this film was, uh, did Me Too uh, affected this case in any way? Uh, I mean, uh, would they have been condemned to seven years of jail in 2019 if uh, there were no Me Too in uh, 2017? Yeah. I, so that, that, yeah. that, that's the, the, the question of, of, uh, of the film. Yeah, and I guess it's affected a lot, right? Me, Me Too movement affected so many cases and so many stories of other people. And I guess it also affected Emily's uh, story too, right? I mean, she was able to go to court again and uh, the, the court decided to uh, condemn the... Uh, policeman seven years in jail and i guess it was the it was because of the me too movement right yes and i think that we now uh we are living a kind of backlash i think yeah and i was not that um astonished by uh, the the last uh, uh, uh verdict yeah yeah. Yeah. They they, so, they are innocent. I'm not I'm not surprised that uh, the jury decided that they were innocent in 2022 because we feel uh, I I don't know how it is in Turkey but in France we feel that people are like fed up by the Me Too movement uh -huh. and people are like oh the feminists they go too far etc etc so. For example, during the first trial in 2019, there were 50 journalists, more or less 50. Mm -hmm. During the last trial in 2022, there, were, there was one journalist from the AFP, from the French uh, agency, uh, first day and the last day for the verdict. So the first day for the opening and the last day for the verdict. And so it means that... Uh, I think I don't know if we are if people are fed up by by all these me too cases or I, I don't know what happened but I feel like it's not that uh, uh, it's not a big issue now in 2022 uh, compared to uh, the first uh, when the me too moment yes, started yes, yes. yeah I'm, I mean, I mean, I guess the, one of the main problems are the way, uh, unfortunately, people are in, inclined to forget, and when something starts, uh, many, many people are in it, involved in it, the media too. But after a long period of time, people started to forget, and there are n new subjects to go after, and uh, unfortunately, I guess the the most uh, problematic part is that. So I just wanted to ask you about the concept of uh, consent. Like you said before, consent is a, a concept that is very important because I, I think people use it and turn it in uh, to their own benefits. I mean, when a, wom a woman can wear what she wants, she can just behave the way she wants. And at the end, she she still has a right not to give a consent, right? And mm -hmm. the the most important and maybe maybe she consented to have sex with one person, but yeah. not two. You yeah, don't exactly. know what happened in this uh, exactly. small piece. 
or yeah. or she can change her mind she she might give her consent and just and after a period of time she might say no i don't want it anymore and i i guess that's the most important thing that uh, respecting a person's choices and not using their uh, the way they behave or the way they wear their clothes for their benefit and i think that's a global issue i mean this international global issue that women face everywhere in all all countries so that's what is really important uh, about this case this case shows uh what is consent and uh where are the limits and a, a woman's courage to uh pursue uh her in a way her innocence in a way pursue her um rights uh, in this documentary against the police forces and usually police forces are always protecting each other so emily is doing something really really important i guess and uh, you are the one uh, in a way who is helping her to show the world her story so i guess mm -hmm it is really really important do you think uh this uh documentary will change in a way maybe in a couple of years the course of this trial do you think she can go again to trial is it possible or is it's done no it won't change uh, anything because uh, they are innocent uh, officially and uh, they are innocent and after the appeal, there's nothing more you can do, except maybe going to the European court. And mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, lawyers are planning to go to the European court, but uh, I don't know much more. I, I, I know that's, that, that's one of their, that's what they are planning, but uh, I, I'm not really sure. But uh, mm -hmm. as you say, it's, uh, it's an international issue. It's uh, the 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 consent. I mean, it's concerning uh, everyone uh, all over the world. So it's, it's. I'm not surprised that this film has been booked in a very different uh, festival. The, the the film is selected in. Uh, I mean, in London, in uh, in Turkey, yeah. in Tel Aviv, uh, in uh, everywhere. So it means that it's an international issue, and you know, in the, in the French law. It's not illegal to have sex with a, a drunk uh, woman or a drunk person. Uh -huh. And uh, as you as you know, as you understand in the film, Emily had uh, two grams of alcohol in, yeah. uh, in the blood. So it's she was highly uh, intoxicated, yeah. highly drunk. And uh, the the question is, do we still consent when we have two grams of alcohol in the blood? Exactly. Yeah. That, I think that's a very important question for me because it's not illegal to have sex with yeah. someone drunk, but how do we know when we consent and when we are not able to consent? When, where is the limit? And that's a, for me, that's a very important question. And maybe maybe we should change something in the law about this, but it's quite dangerous because we can't um, we can't. Uh, sex drunk sex can't be forbidden <laughs> i mean yeah. we can't say to people oh no you're not allowed to drink before sex so it's it's quite difficult uh to uh, to define uh, the the limit uh in in the law oh so, uh thank you for being here with us today and joining us uh yeah. like i said it is a really really important documentary and i hope many many people will watch it and, and I uh, guess that you have the same case, the same kind of uh, case in uh, in Turkey because uh, I think so we many all have this kind of case in all over so the world. So many, so yeah. many, especially in women in Turkey will understand Emily a lot, a lot. They will, they they can look through her perspective because unfortunately there are so many same kind of examples in our country too, and we are fighting for uh, those th those women rights too so that is why it is a really important documentary for us too thank yeah. you very much yeah thank you for joining us again and uh, i hope to see you uh, in future uh, for other projects